Hi everyone. In the last video, we added form validation in our login form. And in this video, we are going to finally complete the login of this application. But before starting, make sure you download this code from the tutorial snapshot folder because I have made some changes in the project and you need these changes. For example, I have this home module now and we are going to navigate to home when we have a successful login. So this module is important. And I have also done some refactoring and some minor changes in the whole project. So you have to download this source code first before moving ahead. Now, one thing that we did for testing in previous videos, we are forcefully opening the login page here. So we will delete this line from here from our auth screen composable. So I will delete it from here. Now the first thing that we will do is we will update our login UI state. What we will do is first we will add some more values. For example, I want to display a progress indicator. So I will define is loading and it is boolean. Now suppose I tried login n and I entered wrong email or password. Then I have to display the error message that email or password is incorrect. So to display this error, I will define one more string res here and it is val login error of type end and the initial value is null. And for is loading, I will make the default value false, not true. So this is the login UI state, but this is not enough. So what I will do is I will define a sealed class and I will name it login UI state. So we have sealed class login UI state. Now I will rename this login UI state to not authenticated and I will put this class inside this sealed class. And here I will write login UI state because it is a sealed class now. So for this login UI state, we have a state that is not authenticated. That means the state, the user is not authenticated. We have one more state that is data object authenticated. And it is login UI state. So now we have two states authenticated and not authenticated inside not authenticated we have all these values now we will update our login view model based on the new ui state so the first thing that i will do is i will assign type to this mutable state flow and here i will write login ui state and here the initial value is not authenticated. That means when we create this view model, the user is not authenticated. Now here we have to update email and password. And because we need to do a typecast to not authenticated, it will increase the code here. So what I will do is I will define a new function. So this is private fun update state and we will update the state when the state is not authenticated. So here I will pass another function. I will name it update and it will return login UI state dot not authenticated. So it will take login UI state dot not authenticated as a parameter and it will return the updated state. Now inside this function, I will make the update. So I will use underscore UI state dot value equals to first I will type cast. So I will check underscore UI state dot value as I will make it nullable so that if we cannot type cast it to not authenticated, we will receive null. So we have login UI state dot not authenticated. Now I will use a let and inside let I will perform update. So I will call update. And if we are receiving null, I will update the old value. So we have old value if the state is not not authenticated. 
So this function will update our UI state and we can use it to update email and password. So here instead of this, we can write update state and it dot copy and email equals to UI event dot email. The same way we will update password. For else we can write unit here because we don't have anything. So we have this on event ready. Now we need to fix our inputs valid. Now here also we can type cast so we can use this line. So I will create a UI here equals to and if we are receiving null we will return false. So if the state is not authenticated, we will go ahead and perform the validation. If not, we will return false. So I will delete these two lines and I will get the email and password from the UI. Now here, instead of updating the UI state like this, I can use update state function. So instead of this, I will write update state and inside I will write it dot copy and I will close it here. So it will update email error and password error if we have any error. Now before making the login call, here also we will update the UI. So when we enter the login function, we will display the progress indicator. So here inside the login function, first we can make it private like this and then we will call the function update state and we will write it dot copy and is loading as true. Now we will make the call and before making the call we need this line to get the email and password. So I will put it at top here. So if we have this not authenticated as the current UI state then we will move ahead else we will return launch. Now from the UI we will get email and password. So we have UI.email and UI.password and we will store it inside a login result val. Now this invoke is returning a resource. So I can use a when and inside when I can create all the remaining branches. So we have either error or success. In case of success, I can simply update the state. But this time, I will update the state directly. So I will update UI state dot value equals to when. So when we have success, we will update login UI state dot authenticated. And if we have error, we can update the UI with the error message. So here I can write UI dot copy and then I need to provide login error. And here I will get the error from the login result. So I can create a function here, get error and I can pass login result to that function. And this is the function that will return the error message. So login function is ready and in the view model, everything else is fine. Now we have to go to the login screen to update the UI as per the new state. So let's go to login and here we are having some errors. So the first thing that I will do here is I will write a when and val state equals to UI state dot value. And here I will add remaining branches. So we have two states when it is authenticated. So when the user is successfully authenticated, I will call on auth success. So I will define on auth success here. We don't have any parameter and it will return unit. So here I will simply call on auth success inside launched effect. And to launched effect, I will pass unit as key because I want to execute this on auth success only once. So the authenticated case is ready. When the user is not authenticated, we have to display login screen. So I will put the login screen inside and for the state, instead of this UI state dot value, I will pass state. 
So here the state is not authenticated in this login function. Now scroll down and everything is fixed, I think. Yeah, everything is fixed. Just to the preview function, we have to pass not authenticated as initial state. Now one more thing I will do here is after this password text field, I will define one more column. And inside this column, I will display progress indicator when the user is login in. And when we receive an error from the UI state, I will display a text with the error message. And that's it. Now we need to go to the calling place of this login screen and we need to assign on auth success. So here we have view model and the next parameter is on auth success. We already have on auth success here as you can see. So we can assign this to on auth success. Now we will go to the calling place of this auth nav graph and here we will navigate to home. So we also need to add a composable here. So we have composable for the root. We will use home root because I have already defined this home root for my home module. You can check the code. So let's go back to Minitails nav host. So we have a composable home root and here I will call home screen. If you open home screen, then you can see we have on logout, on write story, on select story. For now, I am ignoring all these parameters. So I will leave it with default values as you can see here. So we will make the changes here later. For now, we just need to open the home root. So inside this on auth success, I will use nav host controller dot navigate and I will write home root and I will pass a trailing lambda. Now when we go to home root and we press the back button from here, we will come back to the login form that we don't want because user is logged in and now we will open home screen only. And when the user will press back, user will exit the application. So when the user is logged in, user should not see login screen. So here what I will do is I will remove the login from backstack. And to do this, I will use the function pop up to. I will pass auth root here. And again, I will pass a trailing lambda. And here I will write inclusive equals to true. And that's it. Now it should work. So let's run the application. Make sure your API is working and you have added the correct IP in your build.gradle file. So my IP has changed. So this is the new IP and make sure this IP is accessible from your emulator or else it will not work. So I will open logcat and here you can see we are getting the API called. For example, in the splash screen, we made the API call to user to check we have a user already logged in or not. And we got invalid authentication token. Please log in again. So this part is working fine. Now first, I will enter wrong email and password. You can see I am getting the error invalid email or password. And if you go to the log, you can see I passed this email and a wrong password and I got this response. Now this time I will try with correct password. So let's log in and bingo, we are inside the home screen of the application. Now from here, if I press back button, the application exits. So let's open it again. And we are inside home screen because the user is already logged in. So we have this bottom nav and this action button. So our login is working absolutely fine and we have finished the login. You can get the source code from the same folder that is tutorial snapshot. And I hope you found this video helpful and learned something. In case you have any question or problem, you can leave it in the comments below. And I am going to complete this 
project and because it is growing big it is hard to make videos so i am planning a live session on my discord channel i will leave the link below so please join and i will schedule live sessions where i will show you how i will move ahead with this project so if you are interested in live learning please let me know in the comments below thanks for watching everyone this is pelal khan now signing off